we're going to be starting the topic of momentum and impulse. At this point, we would have probably dealt with the fact that momentum is another conserved quantity, much like energy. So we can talk about some momentum of time one is related to time two momentum related by some change in between. Different from energy is that this is a vector quantity, so we might have to break it down to x and y, but we're going to start with a few 1D problem just to keep things simple. Momentum, of course, is m times v, a vector, and the impulse is given by force times delta time. So unlike work, which relates displacement, this one uses change in time. So again, since we're going to be relating two different times, we should draw the sketches for the two times that we're describing. So say for time one, we're going to have a train car with a certain mass and it travels at a speed of 4.5 meters per second, presumably to the right in this case. And then later on at time two, it is going to be at rest. So V1 is equal to that, V2 is equal to zero. You could also summarize the information in a little chart, meters per second, and this is zero, barring in mind that this is positive x, and we don't really much care about positive y. Before we plug in everything on the velocities, we also have to care about y forces. So let's think about all the forces that are acting on this particular body through this time. Free body diagram, there's mg, there's fn from the track. Because it's a car, we're gonna assume that there's no friction, but there is definitely a force slowing it down. And to, to do that, there is a force of 1500 Newton, presumably pushing towards the left, so to slow the car down. So then starting away from the top, we have M1V1 plus F delta T is equal to MV2. We can plug things in. The only force that we have to care about is of course this force because the MG and the FN not only are they not in the X direction where we care about, but we also know that they cancel out because the car isn't accelerating up or downwards. So here we're trying to solve for delta t because we're asking the time. So isolating t, we have mv2 minus mv1 divided by f. And so we have 1500 kilograms times my initial speed, sorry, my final speed of zero meter per second minus 1500 kilogram times my initial speed or velocity of positive 5.4 meters per second all divided by my force of 1500 newton but to the negative x direction so the sign should work out the unit as well also works out we have kilogram meters per second the newton is actually kilogram meters per second square so everything cancel out except for the one second, which is here, which gets flipped on top. And so we get 54 seconds. So it'll take 54 seconds to bring the car to rest. To wrap up, just like to point out, we could have also used kinematics. We could have also used energy to tackle this problem, but momentum and impulse is very natural because we're specifically asked for the time over which this all happens. And impulse being force times delta t makes it much easier to use than say energy, which involves work, which is force times distance, which we're not given. 